The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. First of all, let me really thank uh, Dennis and Jennifer for having me here. It's so good to see Molly after many, many years. Uh, just to tell you all about your leaders here, they are second to none. Um, when I first got started in the ministry, I wanted to make sure that I did everything really right. And they're just the kind of people that I could call on whether it's good or bad and just be totally open and honest. And Dennis will tell me, no, that's all you, Samuel. That's all you. <laughs> and they'll tell me if I'm wrong and they'll tell me if I'm right. And so truly they've been the best of friends, mentors, spiritual parents in the Lord who I really, really appreciate. I really appreciate and their teaching has so much helped me in politics. If you know anything about politics, politics isn't as easy as you think it is. Um, and you have to constantly walk in a spirit of love, forgiveness, open-hearted love, and be ready to do what God <laughs> wants you to do and still move on when people call you everything but a child of God and not take it personal. So I tip my, uh, tip my hats to them for everything they've done and for who they are to me and what they've been to me in my life. I truly, truly, uh, my heart gets full because I don't tell them enough how much I really appreciate them and I really love them for everything that they've done throughout the years. They've been with me fr from the beginning, from the beginning. And friends like that, you, you, can't, um, you can't tell them how much uh, you appreciate them. But with the few words that I have in my vocabulary, I will tell you, thank you. Thank you for being there. And I love you with all my heart. Amen. 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 Well, well, it, it is, we are going to, uh, I have several planes to land and one runway. And so I'm going to try to land them all and do what I can do and give you all that I have. But I, I'm going to start straight out of the gate because there are times in the message when I will uh, give a prophetic act or even when I'm ministering, I will give you a prophetic act to do. Now, these prophetic acts are just so, so powerful in itself. And a prophetic act simply, it's a divine decree uh, having the force of law behind it, the force of God's law behind it. And when God gives a prophetic decree or, or you give a prophetic act, literally it's unalterable and unchangeable, irrevocable. So there are times in the message that you will or somewhere in um, during the time that I'm here, you may be asked to do something prophetically. So, and, and again, again, it's just a, a prophetic act, a divine decree coupled with physical deeds coupled with physical deeds. So we're going to, we may do some of that today. I just wanted to throw that your direction before we get into anything else. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 15. Isaiah chapter 11. Now we're going to turn our Bibles a whole lot today and we're going to get everything done. You may have to purchase the CD if you are doing that afterwards because I want to take care of everything uh, that I'm here for. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 15. So we're going to be in Isaiah some, we're going to be in First Chronicles, but those are the two chapters, books we'll be in, and we may run to Daniel, depending on how um, the, the, the flow of things. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 15. And this particular why I'm saying this, it's because I believe the Lord really wants to do some really interesting things here. 
And the Lord divided the gulf of Suez. He will wave his hands. He will wave his hands over the Euphrates with his mighty wind. And he will split the seven streams, letting people walk through on foot. There will be a highway. Why do I start with that? Because I'm saying that there are things that that, that river Suez or the Gulf of Suez it was a gulf in between Asia and Africa, between two continents. And there are things, uh, Apostle Dennis and, and Jennifer, that I really believe the Lord is saying he is going to split those things that have separated one continent to another, and he's going to cause you all to just move through. He's going to move through it on dry ground without any hindrance, without any interruption. When we look at the Euphrates River, it was one of the most important and uh, the most historical rivers that we know of right now. And the Lord is saying that he's going to move. He's going to wave his hands and he's going to cause you just to walk through. He's going to wave his hands. When I did this, when it, there was a scripture here um, when, in Charleston, and I said that there was this young lady. She was going through something. And her mother, I said to her mother, I said, every time I read this scripture, I think of you. Now, at that particular time, and we just run to chapter 13, same book, Isaiah chapter 13. And it says, lift up a banner. Uh, lift up a banner. Call them out. Wave your hands, and they will go through the gates of the nobles. They will go through the gates. And I said to this young lady, I said, uh, for some reason, I just said, just wave your hands wave your hands she had been going through something that i can't say here for so for such a long time just so devastating to her and she began to wave her hands within two as she called and she said two hours after she got home she had a phone call and everything changed everything changed so I am saying that God is about to wave his hands over some situations and things and to cause you to walk through those historical things, these ancient things that have been blocking, stopping, and hindering you. It's going to just be a wave of the hand of God that's going to sweep over this place. So I'm going to talk to you about kingdom life today. Kingdom life. Kingdom life, understanding the power, the authority that God has and the authority that you have in God. This, we're staying in Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 23. Isaiah 23. Verse 17. And this was a time here where Tyre was a country where the Lord was calling judgment on them. And after 70 years, they were, to, they were going to start prospering and having their money and their wealth again. And this is going to mean so much to you all. Verse 17. At the end of the 70 years, the Lord will restore Tyre. And she will go back into business. Going back into business. It's going to be interesting. Prostituting herself with all the kingdoms of the world on the face of the earth. But her profit and her wages will be dedicated to the Lord. There are people, and even in America and through the other parts of the country, they may be in business and they're doing good business practices, but they are heaping those things up for the people of God. Check this out. They will not be stored or saved, for her profit will go to those who live in the Lord's presence. Her profit will go to those who live in the Lord's presence. For years, you all have been teaching about living in the Lord's presence. There's some things. There's some things, there's some things that God wants you to begin to profit from where the wealth of the wicked. And although I often say we just don't want the wealth of the wicked, we want the wicked and their wealth. 
we want the wicked and their well. And it says here, it will go to those who live in the presence of the Lord to provide them with ample food and sacred clothing, ample furnished, that they'll be adequately furnished. Now, I'm going to just throw this out here. When I was, when I lied down last night, and I typically don't re receive words when I just put my head on the pillow. I'm, I receive words throughout the day or when I'm studying here. And Apostles Dennis and Jennifer, I just heard in my spirit that, that the Lord, someone, someone is going to write you all a $100,000 check, a $100,000 check to do some things, not to full stature, not to kingdom life, but to you, but to you. And that is only a portion. That's only a portion of what God is going to do with you all and for you all in this season because of your purity and because of your sincerity and your dedication, because you have been in the presence of the Lord. And now the Lord is saying he's about to give you the wealth. He's about to give it to you. And so I would just throw this caveat out there. And if you're in the room, go ahead and obey God so we go in and God can bless you. Amen. <laughs> Go ahead and obey God so he can, and he'll bless you, and, and you'll see some things unlock, unlock in your life. Isaiah 22, and we're setting the sound foundation because we're talking about kingdom life, and this is, this is so awesome here. Isaiah 22, we're going backward to go forward, verse 21 and 22. You with me? He says, I will clothe him in the robe and tie your sash around him. I will put your authority. I will put your authority. When we understand authority, power, power, rulership, the force of law, into his hands, and he will be like a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. I will place the key of David, the key of the house of David on his shoulders. Now this is twofold here. To the Clarks, you have been fathers to many. And now God's gonna increase your power and he's gonna increase your influence. And where the weight of fathering nations and fathering people have caused others to collapse. But the Lord is saying, you're going to rise. He's going to strengthen your shoulders. Now check this here out. I will place the key of the house of David on his shoulder. What he opens, no one will close. What he closes, no one will open. What he opens, no one will close what he closed. No one. Are you with me? What he opens, no one can close. What he closed, no one can open. What he opens, no one can close. Now, this is for the house here. This is for the house because you all have been in the presence of God, because you are in good leadership here. A lot of times we don't understand what the key of David is. We hear a lot about worship. But the key of David, what goes along with that is satisfied with long life. God told David, I'm going to satisfy you. With that. Oh, literally, it says that David lived a long life, ripe age, long life. The key of David, access to riches, glory, wealth, prophetic mentorship. Divine guidance is the key of David. Now, a key can only open one door at a time, but the key of David gives you access to these things. Divine guidance, protection, understanding, the knowledge and the ability to understand what was written. David had the ability to understand whatever, he, whatever was written. God gave him that insight. 
And so there are things that we read sometimes, rather it be in business, rather it be in politics, rather it just be um, spiritual books, some where we've been void of understanding. There's no need for us to say anymore that I don't understand because you have the key of David to unlock, to unlock understanding, unlock knowledge. David understood things that were written. And so God is releasing that, this word over you all so you can no longer walk around saying, I don't know. I don't know what to do. You have it on the inside of you. David was given specific plans and details. When his enemy came to get him, God revealed the strategies and the plots of the enemy. The key of David, the key of David. God is releasing over this house and over you all the key of David. That you will understand the plans and the strategies of the enemy. Whatever he's trying to do against you. So there's no need to freak out. There's no need to have a bad hair day. There's no need to ever wake up on the other side, the wrong side of the bed. Strength and courage. Access the key of David. The ability to lead and train, equip men who are desperate, in debt, and discontented. When David went to the cave about duel, it says he, was, he dealt with men that was dis, uh, they, they were distressed, they were desperate, and they were in debt. And David raised these men, and they began to be mighty warriors. We hear about Goliath one, but these men, I think three of them took out a whole army. The ability to train, raise, and equip men who are in debt, destitute, discontent, the key of David, the key of David. And you all are going to see that in a brand new way, a brand new way. The ability to discern good and bad like the angel of God at one particular point is as David had the ability to discern good and evil like the angel of God, the key of David. The key of David is being released here. Another point where it says that David had the ability to discern, uh, or he had the wisdom like the angel of the wisdom of God, knowing everything on earth. There weren't any secrets hidden from him. The key of David. The key of David. And you get all of this by being in the presence of God and that's one of your strong points you're teaching how to be in the presence of God and now God is revealing I believe he's allowed me to be here to reveal these things who you are what you're about and how you're going to access a new realm and a new dimension God is with you wherever you go part of the key of David key of David God deals with your enemies and it's something we don't like to say, but he makes your name great. He told David, I will make your name great like the great nations. The key of David. God establishes a place for us and he allows us to be in that place undisturbed. There was one point in David's life where he had war, but then there came a point where scripture says he had rest on every side. The key of David, where he gives you the key of David and you have rest on every side. When you access the key of David, your enemies or evil will not be oppressed or it will not oppress you. Your children and your offsprings are blessed. Thank you, Lord. It's the key of David. God's faithful love will never leave you. It will always be with you. And the key of David grants us divine protection. There are so many times in scriptures where we see where Saul was coming after David and God protected him. God protected him. That's the key of David. So God is releasing. 
God is releasing and to seal all of that in your hearing. Let's turn to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14 and verse 24. This is powerful. The Lord of hosts has sworn, as I have purpose, so it will be. As I have purpose, so it will be. As I have planned it, so it will happen. Settling ourselves, if God planned it or if he purposed it, it will be. If he planned it, it will happen. That, a, that confidence that we have in the redemptive work of the Messiah who gave his life for us. If God planned it, it will happen. If he purposed it, it will be. There are some things in your life that you have asked God for. You've gotten prophetic words about it. And I'm here to remind you, if he planned it, it's going to happen. If he purposed it. It will be. It will be. You've got to seal that in your memory bank. If he purposed it, it's going to happen. If he planned it, it's, it will be. Now, we're going to run to Second Chronicles for a minute. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 5. 26, excuse me. Second Chronicles chapter 26. Verse 5. Oh, and I love this. God helped him against the Philistines, the Arabs, the Ammonites. God gave Uzziah tributes, and his fame spread as far as the entrance of Egypt, for God made him very powerful. This is one. Thank you. God is going to help us in the midst of Gentile rule, in the midst of oppressive, and we don't have oppressive government here in America, but there are some of you may have to deal with that. But God helped him, and God made him very powerful. The Ability of God to really help. And check this out. Let's go to verse 15. Same book. And I love this. This is the part that I really love. He was made skillful. He made skillfully designed devices in Jerusalem to shoot arrows and catapult large stones for the use of the tower. This is ingenuity when God is on our side and when God is with us. So his fame spread even to a distant place for he was marvelously helped until he became strong. The word of the Lord here is that God is going to marvelously help you until you become strong. Until you become strong. The power of God working in the lives of the believer. Chronicles, Second Chronicles, let's just 27. 
You're with me? And let's look at verse 6. Here again. So Jotham strengthened himself because <laughs> All right. He's helping me minister. So Jotham strengthened himself because he did not you are you with me? Waver in obeying the Lord. If you're looking for strength, if you're asking God to strengthen you, you strengthen yourself by obeying the word of God. By obeying God, you get stronger and stronger as you obey God. So you could pray and praying is good. But when we actually obey the word of God, we strengthen ourselves. We strengthen ourselves. This is where true strength comes from. This is where true power comes from. Second Chronicles 30. Verse 12. Also, the power of God was at work in Judah to unite them to carry out the command of the king. The power of God at work to unite us to carry out the command, what the commands, uh, the command of the king and his officials by the word of the Lord. At God's power at work to unite us with the purpose and the plan of God. So when we think, if we think we are far away from God, the Holy Spirit that's on the inside, the same Messiah that we call on, through his spirit, he works on the inside to unite us, to obey God's command. His strength, he, he, he works with us. His power works with us. Also, the power of God was at work in Judah to unite. The power of God is at work in you to unite and to connect you with the plan of the one we call Messiah, the one who is and is to come, the one our beginning and our end. In. His power is at work on the inside of us to unite us to his plan. Now 32, and I'm about to bring it on home and do some little prophecy, do some prophecy stuff for you, right? Thirty-two. Verse 20. Now we're dealing with Hezekiah. Most of you know about Hezekiah. And at this particular time, Hezekiah, his fame, he, he was growing in the things of God. And he was a really good king. But then he had certain issues in his life. I, uh, Second Chronicles 32, verse 20. Are you with me? King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, son of Omas, the prophet, the prophet, the prophet Isaiah, prayed about this. Here was, uh, prior to that, here was Sennacherib, an army that's coming to take him out. Whatever things that comes in your life to take you out, you have a weapon to pray. And when you use your prayer language, this was an army greater and more powerful than Hezekiah. So Hezekiah coupled, he got with the prophet and he prayed. He prayed about it and cried to heaven. And the Lord sent his angels to annihilate every brave warrior. Every brave warrior, all of our enemies who are coming against us, God could send his angels 
This is the benefit of kingdom life, of living in his presence. Every brave warrior, leader, and commander in the camp of the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria returned in disgrace to his land. That's why I'm telling you all, don't worry about those who don't like you. That God, your prayer language, Holy Spirit is working on the inside of you. And those who are trying to destroy you, God will send them away in disgrace. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Stop freaking out. We are light to the world. And there was some of his own children struck down. Verse 22. So the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So the power of the king of Sin Akareb of Assyria from the power of all others, that God saved them from the power of all others. He saved Hezekiah from, his pre from present danger and all others who came to take him out. God saved him. And our Messiah initiated that. He confirmed that. He consolidated as he was with Hezekiah, as he was with Daniel, as he was with David. Now he wants to be that to us. And it's so awesome here. Sennacherib, Assyria, king of Assyria, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, and from all other powers. And this is so interesting. He gave him rest on every side. Rest on every side. Who has been, just wave your hands, who's been in like a whirlwind? Where it seems a whirlwind, uh, a whirlwind, a whirlwind. In the word of the Lord, rest on every side. If he purposed it, so it will be. If he planned it, it will happen. Rest on every side. Those who are in, in that whirlwind, just wave your hands. Just wave your hands. Just wave your hands. Rest on every side. If he purposed it, it will happen if he planned it, so it will happen. It will be, it will happen. And remember, a prophetic act is an authoritative decree with the force of God's law behind it, coupled with a deed that is unalterable and cannot be changed. So God is going to give you rest on every side. Now things are going good in Hezekiah's life. Verse 24, this is, it gets so interesting. In those days, in those days, Hezekiah became sick to the point of death. So he prayed to the Lord. And he spoke to him and gave him a miraculous sign. This particular incident here, it is explained more. You could read it in, I won't go over there, in 2 Kings 20, 1 through 10. When the prophet Isaiah went to Hezekiah and said, get your house in order. You're going to die. And as the prophet Isaiah is walking, before he got to the gate, Hezekiah is praying and the Lord heard Hezekiah's prayer and the Lord says go back and tell Hezekiah I'm going to give him 15 more years and the miraculous sign here was Hezekiah the Lord told Isaiah the prophet told Hezekiah look God is going to give you 15 more years Hezekiah says how do I know it's true 
And the prophet Isaiah says, do you want the Lord to turn, turn, turn the steps of your shadow forward 15 steps or backwards 15 steps? Hezekiah said, it's easy to turn it forward, to allow the shadow to go forward 15 steps. Let it go backwards 15 steps. So it went backwards 15 steps. That means God is altering times. God alters times on your behalf. And so this was the miraculous sign. When we pray, God sends us miraculous signs. However, because... His heart was proud. See, when God blesses us, we cannot allow pride to get in the way. And that's why I thank God for your, your pastors, because they're not going to let pride get in my way. I'm telling you, they tell me like it. There's, we say it in, uh, years ago, we used to say it in uh, South Carolina in Goose Creek, like it T.I. is. That means they don't cut any corners or anything like that. And you need people like that. So we can't allow pride to get in our ways once the Lord blesses us. However, because his heart was proud, Isaiah did not, Hezekiah did not respond according to the benefit that had come to him. So the wrath of God was on him and Jerusalem. Listen to this here. Then Hezekiah humbled himself. From his pride that was in his heart. He and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So the Lord's wrath didn't come on him during his lifetime. When we humble ourselves and pray. This is part of kingdom living. We could experience this type of life. We could experience this. I want us to go to 2 Chronicles 35, and we're going to finish in, in Daniel, and then I'll do some ministry, okay? 2 Chronicles 35. Verse 21. Verse 20. I'm going to skip through it, but it's just to get to some of the main points. After all this, here's a situation with uh, Josiah and Nico. Josiah, Nico is going to battle. Josiah comes in after Josiah had won many battles and done great things for the Lord. And let's just pick it up. Um, so Nico, he, so in, in verse 21, but Nico sent message, uh, sent message to him saying, what is the issue between you and me, king of Judah? Josiah's coming against Nico. He doesn't really have an issue, but because he was a great warrior, he just decided he wanted to get involved. This is twofold here. We have to know when not to get involved in a battle Although God may have gifted us and placed us in a spot, the key of David having the discernment to know what is actually going on. The king of Judah, what do I have? What do you have? What do I have to do with this? Or what do you have to do with this king of Judah? I have come. I have not come against you today, but I am fighting another dynasty. Here's Nico saying, I'm fighting another dynasty. I don't have anything to do with what you're doing. Check this here out. It gets really interesting. God told me to hurry. God told me to hurry. And check this out. And that's the word I'm hearing for the two of you. Hurry. Hurry. Check this out. Stop opposing God who is with me. Don't make him destroy you. Josiah. So Josiah went ahead, disguised himself because he wanted to fight in battle so bad. And guess what? He got killed in that battle. Stop 
opposing God or God will destroy you. I'm saying this, don't get in the way of what God is doing. And there are times that we have to have the DNA, that we have the DNA of God on the inside when we know the enemy is coming against us, it may be in the form of a person that we are able to say, not to the person, but able to say to the enemy, stop opposing God or he's going to destroy you. You're in a situation here. I called one of the ladies up. And she was going through here again, a whirlwind. And I, she had property. And her and her husband couldn't make up their mind. She wanted to sell. He didn't want to sell. And so I called her up. And I said, at the count of three, you're going to say, stop opposing me. I said, you're going to say it three times. Uh, excuse me. I said, you're going to say it. Seven times, stop opposing me. She did the first time she said it. She said it the second time. When you got to the third time, then more power came. The property they were arguing over, over 40 homes. I think they have over 40 different homes. And the husband didn't want to sell. So he agreed to sell 30 and keep 10. There were forces that were, was opposing their wealth, and their wealth had been just locked up. They had not been getting the profit that those homes, from the homes. There's somebody here. I don't know how you all do it in Fort Mill, but on a Sunday morning, at the voice of the Lord, and they are kicking things off they're having service right now and they're probably having a good time I need and we're going to get back to the message because I have to hurry those of you who have been having these just opposition and you don't know why things are coming and they keep stopping and they keep blocking you if you would stand really quick, really quick, because we're going to do this really quick, really quick. And at the count of three, I want you to shout, stop opposing me. And God is going to begin to do things. One, get those things that's on your mind and in your heart. It has caused your pain. It caused your blood pressure to go up. Why is your blood pressure up? Two. Three. Stop opposing me! One more time. Stop opposing me! Thank you. You may be seated. Knowing who we are. Kingdom living. Now, we have to go to Daniel, and I'm going to finish this. Daniel chapter 44. Excuse me, Daniel chapter 4. If there's a 44, it's something I don't know about. <laughs> Daniel chapter 4. <laughs> Let's look at this. Earlier, I'm going to tell you what the king had a dream and Daniel was interpreting the king's dream. I'm not focusing so much on the king's dream as to the how the power of God works and that God could take an impossible situation. So, Literally, before we get to verse 28, uh, Daniel interpreted the dream, and he pretty much, in 25, he was telling 
King Nebuchadnezzar in 25, he says, you will be driven away from your people to live uh, with, the wild be with the wild animals. You will feed on the grass like the cattle and you will be drenched with the dew from the sky for seven periods of time until you acknowledge uh, that the Most High is ruler over all the kingdoms of man. And I'm at 25. And he gives it to anyone he wants, verse 26. He has commanded, he, as for the command to leave a tree stump with its root, it's going to mean something in a little bit. Now let's go ahead down. To verse 28. The king is prospering. And in verse 28, all this happened to the king Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 29. At the end of 12 months, as Nebuchadnezzar was walking on the rooftop of the royal palace in Babylon, the king exclaimed, Is this not Babylon the great? Here it is, pride that I have built by my vast power to be a royal resident, residence to display my majesty. While the words were still in the king's mouth, a voice came from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is declared that the kingdom has departed from you. You will be driven away from your people to live with the wild animals, and you will feed on the grass like the cattle for seven periods of time until you acknowledge the Most High is ruler of the kingdom of men, and he gives it to anyone he pleases. This is going to be very key. This is going to be very key here because we're going to show you the power of God and how God could turn things around for you. It doesn't matter how bad it is. All right, you're with me? At that moment, verse 33, the sentence against Nebuchadnezzar was executed. He was driven away from his people. He ate grass like cattle. His body was drenched with dew from the sky until his hair grew like eagle's feathers and his nails like a bird's claw. But at the end of those days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, now Nebuchadnezzar is telling Daniel the story. I, Nebuchadnezzar, looked up to heaven and my sanity returned to me. Then I praised the Most High and honored and glorified him for 12 months walking around like an animal. Could you imagine that? totally insane eating like he's an animal his claws have grown out like a bird's claws but he looked up and he said my sanity returned to me Amen. so what is this telling me that it doesn't matter how mentally ill a person is when they look up to God God could return their sanity. This is kingdom living. Let's check this out. For his dominion is forever. It's an everlasting dominion. And his kingdom from generations to generations. All the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing. I want to skip over that, but this is where I want it to be here. Verse 36. At that time, my sanity returned to me. My majesty, my splendor returned to me. The glory of my kingdom, the advisors and the nobles sought me out. I was reestablished. My kingdom, even more greatness came to me. Now, could you imagine this? A person who is in the field eating grass, literally insane. And his nobles, 
his advisors now coming back to the person for 12 months. They've been acting like an animal. Years ago in South Carolina, we had Bull Street. They called it the mental institution. Could you imagine how many people would go back to a person for advice when they were that mentally challenged. There's no secret what God could do. One of the purposes of the book of Daniel, Daniel wanted to show God's power. He wanted to show the Hebrew, the Arabic, and the Greek listeners the power of God. to demonstrate to the children of Israel how powerful God is. So check this out now. At that time, my sanity returned to me. My majesty, my splendor, he lost everything. And he regained it back. When we look to God, My advisors and my nobles sought me out, a, cra a man who was, who was a lunatic. Now his advisors are seeking him out. We normally run from a person who's mentally challenged and who experienced that. I was reestablished over my kingdom. Reestablished. Some of you have gone through things. And God wants to reestablish you. The situations of life, God wants to reestablish you. Even more, greatness came to me. Even more greatness came to me. Now, I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalted and glorified the God of heaven because of all his works are true and his ways are just. He is able to humble those who walk in pride. The God we serve. Doesn't matter what you're going through, what you have gone through. We talked about kingdom life, the key of David. Hezekiah, all these examples were to demonstrate to you, to show you the God, the power of Christ, our Messiah, within us. If God purposed it, it will be. If he planned it, it will be happen. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, Forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit forgive 123 Com. Did you know that we have an online school available? Hi, I'm Pastor Jason Clark. We invite you to join our international community of almost a thousand students currently enrolled in a school like no other. Team Embassy equips believers to live in the Spirit by giving them the how-to tools for wholeness intimacy with God, and living the abundant life Jesus promised us. You will learn how to heal emotional pain quickly and completely. You'll discover amazing keys to tap into the fruit of the Spirit and practice the presence of God as a lifestyle. Exciting courses available include the 60-day challenge, self-deliverance, healing rejection, codependency, intimate prayer, the functions of the human spirit, and 
many, many more. It's formatted so that you could take it with you on all your mobile devices. Sign up today at training.teamembassy.com. Be transformed. Become all God created you to be. You will never be the same.